So if you own 25% or more of an LLC, your name's got to go to the to FinCEN that you're an owner in it. If you are a manager or an officer in an entity, you need to have your information report to FinCEN to say you're a manager or officer in that entity. Oh, yeah. and the penalty? If you don't report this or you don't update it within 30 days, $500 day penalty and jail time. Any of you that have any LLC that's just been laying around, if you don't clean this up, FinCEN's going to be calling. Yeah. So there's two things you have to do to get rid of an entity that you don't need. And do you want to get a letter in the mail from the federal government, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network? They pack heat. <laughs> yeah, they got badges and guns in that department, okay? <laughs> Welcome everybody to probably one of the most important podcasts you're going to listen to this week, this month, or this year. We're going to be talking about the Corporate Transparency Act, the biggest law that has been passed for small business owners and in maybe a decade that's gonna affect your small business. This is a big deal. We're finally coming out loud. We're coming out strong and with clarity. People aren't talking about it. We're gonna start talking about it. today is the day. Yeah, you guys have to know this. This law is gonna affect every small business owner. You have an LLC, an S corporation. That thing must comply with this new law. Everybody has to do this. We're gonna go over some exceptions. They're narrow but everybody's gotta know this. So we want you to focus on this. I don't care if you got rental properties, you got a small business, a side hustle, a big business, you must know this law and you must comply because there's jail time. We're not just talking about penalties for not complying. We're talking about oh. handcuffs, oh, yeah. orange clothes. <laughs> yeah, the, the, new, the new color of whatever. Right? Yeah. Okay. And the, oh, and the penalties are only $500 a day. So yeah, it, yeah but no, the jail time. No big deal, per entity yeah. by the way. Now, some of you are like, <laughs> what in the hell are you talking about? Okay, so let's just say in summary, I'll take a shot, Matt, because it, it can be complex. Over four years ago, the feds passed a law for the Corporate Transparency Act. It started, they tried to give everybody forewarning that it's gonna take effect 1-1-24. So we are less than 60 days away from that that D-Day, it is now upon us. We have not wanted to talk about it or cared talking about it until we need to. It's time to talk about it. Now in this law, essentially why they're doing this is because they're sick and tired of drug dealers, human traffickers, terrorists, money launderers, and scam artists that hide behind LLCs. I know you want to be mad at the feds, but it's really not the feds we should be mad at. Yeah, it's kind of these bozo criminals, terrorists, money launderers, and fraud artists that have ruined entities and LLCs. And we see it as as lawyers representing clients mm -hmm. that get duped by people hiding behind entities and they're trying to sue it or track it down. They can't find anyone, yet they've lost thousands, tens of thousands, or possibly even more money um, because of some type of fraudulent transaction. And so there is some public benefit that's gonna happen from this. There will be a little bit of pain. We've got you though. We're gonna go through what needs to happen and we're gonna be helping in our law firm, KQS Lawyers and our company compliance business, Main Street Business Services. Um, but there is some purpose and benefit to this in the long run. Yeah, it is. And, and yeah, spoiler alert, just so you don't freak out too badly. You can report and what do you need to do if you wanna do it yourself. We're gonna give you some tips and strategies very quickly here of things you can do to uh, comply or get rid of the requirement to comply. Um, but we have a service we've been doing for 10, 15 years. Our, co our company compliance services is built for this for 200 bucks. We're going to take care of any client that needs to get this taken care of. And we're talking about state issues, IRS issues, FinCEN. We've been doing this for years. So we're ready for you. And we've got the infrastructure and we've been around forever talking about this. But I do want to say that too. I like yeah. the way you said that. There's public benefit here. Don't be mad at the feds. I, I'm, a, I'm afraid of them. I don't want to be dealing with them. I don't want to get a letter or a phone call from the feds. But at the same token, we have to realize if we all get together as business owners and start reporting who really owns these LLCs and S Corps, who the managers and officers are, when our addresses change, phone numbers change, all of that has to now be reported with driver's licenses and passports and all sorts of information. We're going to break that down here. Then we can get rid of, hopefully, some of the riffraff out there that is hiding behind this. Because think, if you want to go after someone, that you, you, an LLC rips you off, what do you do? You call the FTC, the state or the federal level, they're like, okay, we'll put you on hold and here's our list. You file a lawsuit, that company's long gone and the people in Ukraine or wherever running it are long gone. I mean, before yeah. you can even file the paperwork. They're already using another LLC name that it, no one knows who the heck it is. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah. <sighs> so that's why we're doing this. Yeah, that's why we're doing this. And we'll get into the details on what you need to know, what needs to be reported, what are the deadlines, what about new entities set up, what's going to happen. We're going to get into those details so you know what to do. But bottom line, like Mark said, we're going to help you. We're going to make sure you take, we take care of you. Now, for any of you money launderers, criminals, and fraud artists out there, I've got a tip for you. <laughs> Hide. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't call us. Okay. No, just yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. That, for those... What is that? That's um. What is that taken. one? It's taken. taken. That's right. Liam Neeson's on the other end of this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming after you. Good I'm luck for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now, Good. the entity we're going to be talking about, or the the government agency, I should say, is called FinCEN. This is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. It's a department within the Treasury that also coordinates with state criminal enforcement agencies. So we're going to be saying FinCEN. That's what it is. That's the agency within the Department of Treasury where these reports are going to go. So I just yeah. want to make sure everybody knows what the heck FinCEN is because none of us had to deal with that yet. Well, I was just going to say, many of you don't realize this, but FinCEN is already in your lives. When you go to open a bank account at Wells Fargo or B of A. The an fin IRA, a directed IRA. Yeah, an IRA. doing FinCEN stuff already. Yeah, 401ks. The IRS, and I'm sorry, FinCEN is, is looking for people with social security numbers and EINs and bank account to some degree, they're trying to do their best. This is the missing link. This is the missing link because EINs, they're just a dime a dozen. There's 45 million LLCs in America this year, 45 million. And they're a moving target for federal agencies to go after bad people. And so, yep, all of us good people have to start saying, this is a good LLC and here's who I am. So they can start peeling away the onion to get to the bad ones. And yeah, and I think many of you, a lot of people think, well, what's gonna happen to this information? There's been a lot of scare tactics out there in social media. Oh, the big bad government's gonna have my information. They already have it. Yeah. You already, you have a social security number. You have to file a tax return. When you get an EIN for your business entity, you have to give them your social. Like they already have this information. This is another way where they're gathering it to make sure to they know all the players involved, mm -hmm. not just one party, which is all that's required to get in, but everybody that might be involved, and we're gonna go into who that might be, but they already have this now. This is going to be private, Yes. okay? This federal government agencies get it, they can share with state government agencies, and they can share it with banks and financial institutions if you consented with the bank or financial institution. Because what's gonna happen is now the banks are gonna have to cross-reference their data and bank accounts with these entities. And that yeah. stuff's gonna need to start matching up. So even in the future, guys, if you're not doing this stuff, this could cause banking problems in the future. Yes. Your bank account stuff might get screwed up. You might not be able to get a bank account set up if you're not complying with this. And so, but it's not like it's gonna be a public database like your state LLC where people can type in who's the manager or member in some states and figure that out. This is gonna be private, not publicly available. Yes, and on that note, we are still implementing privacy measures. I don't want people to know where I live. I don't want people to know what LLCs I own and what rentals I own. We can still do that. This is for the federal government to know what's going on. Now, I know some of you are very skeptical of that. You hate the big brother. I get it, um, but we have a lot of clients that they still have a bank account, they still have an IRA, they still do business, but we can keep their assets private and create asset protection. I And you know, I think again, this is such an important perspective that the the the, the IRS and this, the, the federal government is trying to just piece together who's really doing good business and who's doing bad business. And as we comply, all that crap's gonna float to the surface and but we don't want to be caught off guard getting a nasty letter because we didn't do it right. So Matt, with all these people with these entities, um, let's, still like, let's talk about first what they should expect to file so that they might yeah. be motivated to clean up some of their stuff. We're going to come to that. But anybody that has that entity, what's going to be required to be filed next year by the end of next year? They have all next year to file yeah. a, a, a report. Tell us about that report. Yeah, so this is the Beneficial Owner Information Report, the BOI. Okay. Okay, you're filing this to FinCEN starting on January 1st, 2024. If you have an entity in existence already, starting on January 1st, 2024, you need to file this report. And they want to know two things. Anyone in that entity who has substantial control, we'll talk about what that means, and anyone who has beneficial ownership of 25% or more. So if you own 25% or more of an LLC, your name's gotta go to the to FinCEN that you're an owner in it. If you are a manager or an officer in an entity, you need to have your information report to FinCEN to say you're a manager or officer in that entity. Yep. So substantial control, beneficial ownership, 25% yeah. or more. So for example, you might have a kid, and there's so many examples in the law on this. We, we're gonna be unpacking this more in future webinars and 
uh, articles, but that you may have a child of yours that's the manager of your LLC or the, and, and they only own 5% because they're a manager, they have to be listed. So any officer or man, uh, officer of an L, uh, corporation or manager of an LLC will have to be listed no matter what ownership they have. Then you may say, well, my grandma owns 25%, but she's not even a manager. She has 25% or more. So anybody with 25% or more or anybody yeah. that's officer, this has got to be on that report. And we're talking about driver's license or passport, social security number, and the address of the company and the address of the people. They want all that to yeah. tie together. And guess what? It's going to be cross-referenced yeah. with the IRS and banks and states all over the country. So if you have an LLC or a corporation, and some of you are like, yeah, I've got one. I don't even know where it's at. We're going to come to that. But if you have any entity, yeah. this is the report that has to be filed. By the way, again, we'll do this for you for a couple hundred bucks. We're, get, we're going to give you the, the resource for that. Yeah. So to, just just chill, but you... Yeah, <laughs> chill, but be focused, okay? Don't, yeah. you know, don't chill too much, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, you need to get this done. But, um, but keep in mind, what Mark said there, that really quick though, it's your full legal name, your date of birth, your home address, your physical address, of course, the company address uh, on behalf of the company, and then um, also a government ID that could be state driver's license or passport. Okay, they're not messing around here. They want enough information that they feel like they can really know who is someone that has substantial control or 25% or more beneficial ownership. And if any of that information changes for you and you're a 25% or more owner or someone that has substantial control, you have to update that with FinCEN. You it move within, addresses personally, you have to update that. Within 30 days. You have 30 days from now on, if you change any of that information and you go, well, I have two homes or, uh, you know, I live between here or there, <laughs> beyond wherever your yeah. state residency is. I just talked to someone yesterday. Well, I live half the year in Hawaii and half the year in Washington state. Choose one. Where's your primary residence? And it better start tying out. All of this, I'm going to be playing games with states and I'm going to be playing games here and there with the IRS. It, it, it's, we're, they're closing it. On that and we've been asking clients to be legit anyway but for any of you that are trying to get away with crap this is going to be even more and more difficult and if we as your lawyers are are, are reporting this we have to make sure it's valid or you're on the hook oh yeah. and the penalty if you don't report this or you don't update it within 30 days 500 dollars day penalty and jail time yeah not buckle good. up Buckle up, <laughs> pack uh, your toothbrush. Yeah, don't bend over yeah. the soap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. watch all those movies about prison life. Um, but now we're, you're gonna have an entire year to do this. So remember, existing entities, you're gonna have all the way through the end of 2024 to do this, but you wanna jump on it, you wanna get it done. There's gonna be a lot of people falling in, of course, again at the deadline. It's like you people that do your tax returns on April 15th and October 15th, okay? You're rushing in, there's gonna be a lot of people. So we wanna make sure you're getting compliance with this and don't wait until the deadline. We're going to start helping clients at the very outset, January 1st, 2024. Now, I will say this. Like every federal government program that's ever been created, there are major problems when it comes out. We anticipate that for a few years, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. We're going to be giving you yeah. updates, making sure we're on top of it, yeah. getting stuff done. But just keep in mind, there's probably going to be some delays. There's probably going to be a little touch and go with this stuff. So, um, yeah. Now, and to make your life easy, down at... at, at this is not an infomercial. This is not. This is to alert you to the issue, take it seriously, but give you a resource if you want it. Is down below be a link to our Main Street Business Services. It's a subsidiary of our law firm. It's going to be taking care of all this. And for $200, you can sign up right now. And then you're on our radar. We will take care of it. Done. Now, this is for every entity, which brings us to the cleanup. This is a perfect time for all of you to go, you know what? I got an LLC that's just sitting out there I'm not using. And we're going to come to some exceptions, very yeah. rare exceptions of how to get out of this. But let's just say any of you that have any LLC that's just been laying around, if you don't clean this up, Vincent's going to be calling. Yeah. So there's two things you have to do to get rid of an entity that you don't need. This is a good time. Yeah, and the way you were doing dissolutions now is really important because when you're filing a dissolution... You've got to let a couple of places know. That's why Mark said two things. Okay? Yeah. Yep. And you want to do this ideally before year end. You could do it through next year too, because there's really no penalty until the end of 2024, because that's the final deadline for existing entities. But better to close it out before you're in for other state reasons and not even get on the radar of having to worry about Finson in the first place. So, um, but we want to dissolve. And we do that in our law firm every day at KQS Lawyers. We're dissolving clients' entities. They're closing them out. What's our price to charge for dissolution? It's, uh, I think it's just like, 
me just look right now. Confirm. Good question. This is kkoslawyers.com, 200 bucks to dissolve, plus the state fee. Because we're going to file something with the state that dissolves the entity properly with the state, but also we want to send something to the IRS. Yes, yes. Even you single member LLCs that don't file company tax returns, <laughs> the IRS needs to know that entity's gone. Yeah. Because you have an EIN floating out there. You know, I just want to laugh because I know there's so many of you listening. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I've never done business in it or I don't even report it or, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a single member LLC. I don't have to do it, right? No, you're not getting this. <laughs> okay. okay, there's no way out of this. Okay, so you're going to file with the state articles of disillusion. And you go, well, in Arizona, I don't even have to do annual reports. Yes, that's correct. But you got to file articles of disillusion to kill it. So that's the first step. Number two is you're going to send a letter to the IRS. We have this letter. We do it for you in our disillusion process. It goes to a specific place at the IRS with the specific information to let the IRS know that EIN is now dead. The company is dead. And so that way, when the FinCEN starts to go look at who's not, who's got an active EIN with the IRS or who has an active entity with the state, they're going to see, oh, they're dissolved. Done. Yeah. You're off the radar. By the way, if you have any bank accounts set up under that EIN, I recommend you do that too. We probably need to be talking about that too. Yeah, you want to make sure and you close those down. You might as well let the bank know because what's going to happen is FinCEN's going to start cross-referencing a lot of different places. The banks where there's entities set up that haven't had a FinCEN report. The states that have entities active that they haven't seen a FinCEN report. The EINs they have where they haven't seen a FinCEN report. Okay? State franchise taxes. Okay. State, state franchise, franchise tax reports. boards and state income tax you know, departments. And so we want to make sure that we're closing this out. Let's get it done. Get the official documents that's been closed out. Have a copy of a letter that went to the IRS so you know that this stuff is getting closed down properly. And I like following through on the bank account too because – that's what's going to be happening here. After next year and everyone's had to do this, what is FinCEN going to do? Start enforcement. Yep. And what are they going to go after? All the EINs, all the people with business bank accounts, all the people with entities active with state that didn't send them anything. Because yeah. you know what is in there? All those criminals we were talking about, the people doing the money laundering, all the fraud, the drug trafficking, all that stuff. Those are those entities they haven't heard about. And they're going to think it's you if you didn't close it down. Ooh, and I've got another important one here too. Venmo. Venmo. PayPal, Apple Pay, any of those payment Stripe services that you may have tied to an EIN, you want to go clean those up. Make sure, oh my gosh, yeah. is my am I doing PayPal to that or EIN or whatever? So you want yeah. to clean those up. And I think with clean those out, it's just like close it down. Just yeah. close it. Yeah, just close it. Because they're going to say, well, we don't have an active account for that, you you know, EIN yeah. or that business anymore. Um, and here's in a couple, and here's the Q&A that I know some of you are going to have. Well, I have a trust that owns my LLC. Okay, they're going to look through that. That's a see-through trust. Mm -hmm. Who's Fine. the beneficial owner? And if you're married, and then, but it's a single-member LLC, we're going to be, and this is some of the reporting that is still yet to come out, we will make sure the proper name is on it as a beneficial owner. It could be both spouses in a joint trust. Even though it's a single-member LLC, who is the real beneficial ownership for marital property? Oh, well, I have a, mm -hmm. I have a prenup or this or that. Oh yeah. my gosh, the list goes on and on, right? Or my S corp owns this LLC. Well, your S corp is yeah. going to file first, and it gets an identification number with FinCEN. So you're, there's going to be these new identifiers. So every entity is going to have this identifier number, and that's what you're going to be updating whenever there's a change in address or ownership. And if that identifier owns another LLC, that's what's going to be on the report too. So, I mean, the, the law goes on and on on this, and this is why we'll take care of it for you. Yeah. Have fun reading this at night. If you really want to dive into it or click down below and pay $200 and just know what kind of take care of it. Yeah. Many of you, many of you not, may not know this law firm clients for many years, people that may know our business services company, main street business services. I mean, we do company compliance for 17,000 entities across the That's U.S. Right. already where we're taking care of company compliance stuff, the state renewals, making sure your minutes are done and all that type of stuff, registered agent services, all these compliance things that happen. We are including FinCEN compliance in our company compliance service. Okay, It's a $200 annual fee. That's included. And it includes amendments and updates to this. And I know we say we don't want this to be an infomercial, but guys, you're a busy business owner. Stop doing this yourself. Stop worrying about this yourself. Stop trying to figure this out for your one or two entities. We're going to have a team of people doing this all day long. It's an affordable fee. We'll take care of it for you and take this yeah. off your plate. And and um, now let's say you go, guys, I don't want to use you. You start to try to figure out on your own. You're going to see something come across your feed. It's going to be on your social media, your email, and some major company or whoever 
you never know, is going to be doing this for $49. And you're going to go, oh, I'll use them. Okay. Are they going to be maintaining your entity moving forward? Because we, with that $200, we do your minutes. We make sure you're paid with the state. We main, we help you do your board of directors, board of advisors meetings. We track all of that. And would you like a law firm behind this, behind the scenes, trying to hold all of this private for you? And maybe, oh, if I need to make a phone call and get some questions answered, I can do it with a real law firm and a team that Mark and Matt stand behind. That's why you're calling. That's what we're providing. This is not just file your fence in for 200 bucks. That includes us tracking your crap for a whole year and every year making sure it's updated. So that's a big deal. Um, yeah. Okay. Exceptions. How do I, what, who really gets out of this? Can, there, there's yeah. really a couple that we, there's a couple that kind of, that are going to apply to a lot of people. And the first one pisses me off. Okay. <laughs> the first one is big businesses, or I should say even medium sized businesses are exempt. If you are a large company under the rules here and you have 20 or more full-time employees on your payroll and you're filing payroll, you know, reports to the IRS, or you have 5 million of gross revenue on a federal tax return that you're filing to the IRS. They're like, don't worry about sending us anything. We already know who you are and are tracking your stuff if you're doing that much activity. It's the other entities we don't hear much about or see not a lot of money coming yeah. through, so we don't put any resources to them that we wanna know about. Yeah. So it's called the large company exception, and so they're gonna be exempt from it. And it kinda sucks because it feels like Oh, small business has to go comply yeah, with this. Yeah. <laughs> now, some of you, I want to clarify what Matt said. Not clarify, just add a, uh, a little distinction here. Matt said five million in revenue. Yeah. Now, for those of you that have five million dollars in real estate or fifty million dollars of equity in real estate in your holding companies, that's not an exception. This is operational five million in revenue, and or or twenty full-time employees on payroll. So for all of you that have holding companies and real estate and apartment buildings and syndications and all that, you're still doing this. Yeah. Now, um, and maybe a syndication with uh, rental income of revenue will be exempt, but I'm gonna let, we'll have a call with them. But for all the small business yeah. owners, that, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, now the second one that's gonna be popular is the inactive entity exception. And this is, says, if you had an entity established before, okay, I want to make sure, before January 1st, 2020. 2020. January 1st, 2020, which is when this law was first kind of conjured up and kind of went through the federal government. And it is inactive. You don't use it. There's no assets in it. You haven't had a transaction of $1,000 or more in the last 12 months. You've had no change of ownership in the last 12 months. Okay, these are the criteria. But any entity that is inactive and established before January 1st, 2020, you can use the inactive entity exemption and you don't have to file anything. Now, let's say you set up an entity in 2021 or two. Oh, or no, three. let's go there. Let's go in a minute. Okay, let's go to new setups. All right. Okay, let's unpack this. I had an entity before 2020. Mm -hmm. Haven't used it at all. Oh, I'm exempt. Would that mean you should probably just forget about it? No, because Vincent doesn't know it's inactive. <laughs> yeah. You know it's inactive, but you're gonna wait for them to call you and pound on your door via phone, email, letter, yeah. and threaten penalties, and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, it's inactive. Why don't you just take action now and dissolve the damn thing? That's the method there. So even though you're exempt from filing, and that would be helpful for some of you that might forget. Yeah, I yeah. set up this LLC six years ago and I forgot about it. Okay, if they call you, you can go, oh my gosh, it's inactive. I'm gonna hang my hat on that exception. But any of you that know it's exempt, mm -hmm. just let them know, dissolve the damn thing. Yeah, <laughs> don't make yourself don't make yourself have to prove your innocence later. Like just yeah. like get rid of the issue and question and begin it. Like what you said, I couldn't have scripted ex any differently. Exactly. <laughs> like that is the advice. Like, and I just think a lot of people's mentality is, oh, I'll use that exception. Yeah, it's nice to know if you're there. Like you said, if you forgot about something, but remember after this year passes, like we said earlier, FinCEN is gonna start going after all the non-compliance. They're gonna make money on this for entities not complying. Mm -hmm. And do you wanna get a letter in the mail from the federal government the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network? They pack heat. <laughs> yeah, they got badges and guns in that department, okay? <laughs> these, is... aren't, these aren't pencil pushers with calculators like the other departments in the IRS. These... <laughs> They're legit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this isn't, yeah, this isn't, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna think of some of the uh, actors in some movies, I'm gonna have to play with that. But I, uh, it was funny once, uh, this is like the IRS criminal division. I was once giving a workshop in Chicago, which is, there's several IRS service centers that are big. And it was so funny, this woman raised her hand and she's like, yeah, I got this question and you know, very common in a workshop and I'm answering it. 
And she goes, well, I work at the IRS. And everybody's like, oh, well, don't you know all this? And she's like, no, I'm a small business owner too. I just happen to have a day job at the IRS. And I go, cool, what do you do at the IRS? And she goes, oh, I'm in the criminal investigation division. <laughs> I'm like, and, and you're on my workshop. Everyone else is like, whoops. Yeah, I'm like, you can hear a pin drop. And I'm like, oh, she's packing heat. She's packing heat. She, she, she's, she's got that little patch on her back with Velcro. <laughs> You know, that you can just pull yeah. down and I'm like, holy crap. And so, I mean, FBI. yeah, I mean, it's just like you're in a football game and you can't pee because some big guy is standing right behind you. I mean, I was just like, what do I do next in my workshop? You know, I was just frozen. But anyway, so that's the kind of people we're dealing with here. You don't want that. Oh my gosh. She's standing out in the lobby after at the networking and no one's talking to her. <laughs> yeah, she just blackballed herself all day long. Immediately. Yeah. Hey, you want to network with me? Bye. Um, <laughs> it was crazy. Can I get your card? I don't have cards. <laughs> Yeah, she's That's like, weird. <laughs> yeah. She's like, why is everybody scattered um, when I come around? Anyway, okay, now, so that's the exception if you had any, any before t 2020. Yeah, you wanted to go, and I love it. Yeah. Now I'm setting up a new entity next year. Or you are set up an entity during the pandemic. More people set up entities during the pandemic, 2021, 2022, you know, in 2020 itself. Like, if you had an entity in those years... You can't rely on this exemption, oh, okay. even if it is inactive. Yep. yep. Okay. So there's this little window where there's been millions of entities set up. There was like 5 million plus last year alone, you yeah. know, that you might have had an idea or something and it didn't come to fruition. Or you had a, you bought a property and you sold it and it's still there. Okay. But those are definitely ones you want to clear out. This exemption won't even save you, even if you forgot about okay. it. And, and, and I'm going to just repeat this below. Down in our description, there'll be a link to say, get my company compliant. I want to do my company maintenance, my minutes, make sure I'm good with the state and do my FinCEN report. Click here, 200 bucks, done. There'll be another link that says, dissolve my entity, I want to kill it. That'll go straight to the law firm, not Main Street Business Services, it'll go straight to a law firm and a paralegal will reach out and say, okay, here's the filing fee for the state to do this. They're going to get your info, which is a lot less intrusive than the FinCEN report. We don't need your social and and, yeah. and your ID exactly. and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, just kill it. So they're going to kill it and send the letter to the IRS done. So for 200 bucks, you're either getting on board, you're getting off the train. You just decide, which yeah. one do I want to be on with this entity? So, yeah. Okay. Now, um, new entities being set up. Yes. Okay. okay. Let's say, you know, starting in 2024, when you set up a new entity, this is just going to be a new requirement. You know, like, and we're going to be doing this, of course, in our law firm at KQS stores, every entity we're setting up. This is why you should be setting up entities on your own. You miss this stuff. You don't know what you're doing. This is why you need to be using a real law firm and yeah. real lawyers and professionals that actually know this stuff. Yeah. And companies that are working out of a, a <laughs> the oh Philippines gosh. and like, you know, frankly, or, they're outsourcing everything. <laughs> yeah. Or some call center and they're not even a, a law firm, but yeah, well, we have law for lawyers on staff and they charge more than we do for crying out loud. We have real attorney client privilege. So anyway, if you're setting up a new entity next year, guess what? You're going to love this. We are not changing our prices. Did you hear that? Lawyer, lawyers would love to charge more, trust me, but we're not. We're going to keep doing our entity setups for LLCs and corporations all across the country with a consultation with a real lawyer for our same prices. Sometimes it includes a trifecta and, and you know, a little more support. You get to choose. But when we set up an entity, with next year, this is the rule, within 30 days, you have to do the same report. Yeah. And so we're going to have our paralegals at the same time we're filing everything for your EIN and with the state, with attorney-client privilege, with privacy. Yeah. And you're not just giving this to some... Now you're, now you're talking about giving your passport and your ID and your social to some company in a call center in Southern Utah or Southern Florida, and they're going to be like, Oh, give us your info. You're like, who the hell are you? So we are a real law firm with malpractice insurance and licensure and fiduciary duties. We're going to take your info, prep your entity, file FinCEN as part of your entity setup, same price we've been charging. Yeah, and you know why this is going to be so much more important too in the future for all of you that have existing entities and new entities. When you go to get a business bank account, I'm just telling you, it is going to change on what they ask for. They're probably going to ask for your confirmation that you filed your FinCEN report, Ooh. okay? And they're not even going to open a bank account. They don't want to touch you because all mm. the banks are now going to get policed on this, on these entities they have. And you know what? The banks are not going to want anybody that has not done this FinCEN report. And so this is going to be another thing. It's probably going to be required to the banks. It's going to change procedures but we're going to take care of it for you. Now, FinCEN actually came out just last month and said, we're going to give you 90 days. 
not just 30, to do this report for new entities. So you're going to get 90 days, actually. There's a new update. Which to uh, me is dumb because yeah. you've got to go open a bank account within three days. Right. You and have up to 90, I guess, <laughs> yeah. is the thing. Yeah, we're going to be doing it on yeah. day two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do it like right after your articles mm -hmm. are approved because we have to have your approved articles and your EIN. That means it's going to be the final step, really, is getting this FinCEN report. Um, so this is just going to be serious. It's going to be something you're going to have to get used to. Uh, and you're providing your approved articles, your EIN, and your, filing, your confirmation of filing your FinCEN report. Yeah, and this is why another reason why using your CPA to set up your entity or a non-law firm that's just out there because some influencer told you to use them, or you found them on the web. And not only is there privacy issues of you disclosing more to this entity, who knows who they are, is having the assurances that at the end of the day, everything's in the right spot and you get to go to the bank with what we call a bank packet. Because our paralegals prepare a little bank packet for you, send you to the bank with everything you need. And we get people on social media all the time, taking pictures of their stuff and their bank packet and their corporate book. And they're like, I went to the bank and the banker said, I've never seen someone so organized opening a bank account. We get that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause did you go online and start doing this in pieces and parts and you show up at the bank and they send you back home and la 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 la. la and I know yeah. many of you do, but I'm saving the cost of a law firm. Yeah. That's really good use of your time. Yeah. Go be a business seller and run your business to go make money. Like yeah. um, stop trying to be the, you know, lawyer too on the side, but we um, want to know we're here for you. And I think that's the most important message. We have an amazing team of people that are experienced doing company compliance for years in mainstream business services. This is a, the company that was spun out of our law firm that does company compliance every day. We have our law firm, of course, here. If you need that attorney-client privilege and that conversation, you're kind of in weird scenarios here. We don't want you money launderers and drug traffickers, no. of course, you know. But no. you know what I mean? You might have some stuff on the, on the bubble here or like some – owners that aren't really owners anymore, some weird changes in ownership. Maybe you're on the bubble of 5 million in revenue or the 20 employees. Like we can talk through that and help you figure out what to do. Yep. Okay. And to close out that new entity setup, I want to, I forgot to say this. For those of you that set up a new entity next year, uh, we just told you what we do to make it happen and our pricing and blah, blah, blah. But here's the point. If within 90 days, you don't report to the FinCEN that you set up a new entity, back to penalties, $500 a day, jail time. So for older entities, again, you have until the end of next year to get compliant or dissolve. Or if you set up a new entity next year moving forward, you have 90 days from the day your articles of incorporation were filed with the state. We're not going to worry about when you applied for an EIN. We're going to worry about when did you become an entity with the state? When did you go on the map? That's good. You got 90 days to report to FinCEN or penalties and jail time, potential jail time, of course. So, that, so you want to... No, there's a new sheriff in town. It's called Vinson, and uh, we want we want to help you stay out of their way. We don't, we don't want to shoot out of the OK Corral. We want to be there for you. Yeah, and, and this sheriff has a ton of deputies, yeah. all right? This, this, this yeah. is the big deal is the feds, all yeah. right? Let me just say, I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> I, I got your back. I'm your huckleberry. Okay. I don't think that's going to help here. <laughs> It's oh, not going to ease the, my pain. Um, all right. Well, uh, thanks, everyone. Of course, we're always trying to give you the information you need to better protect your wealth, live the American dream, pay less in taxes, take control of your financial future, all those amazing things. And it happens with good tax and legal planning and staying in compliance with the laws. That's what this is all about with the Corporate Transparency Act. Yep. All right. Well, everybody, if you found us for the first time trying to get information on the CTA, you may have gone, hey, these guys are actually kind of make this interesting and break it down. We are real lawyers, real tax lawyers, real small business advisors. We've been around for 20 plus years, helping clients nationwide. Please subscribe to the podcast. We've got our sister podcast, the Directed IRA podcast. Uh, we're both on YouTube. We've got a great law firm and a great team. And we're so grateful for our incredible team members that have been with us now for years, helping us be ready for this. So um, please get on board. We, we want to be your source for this tax and legal info that you can rely on with legitimacy, malpractice insurance, real licensure. Please be careful listening to an influencer or someone that is not in their right lane. I am so sick and tired of influencers out there talking about our job of the tax and legal. I don't go into their lane and tell everybody how to go close on a rental property in three days and all the little tricks and strategies or how to go do Forex trading or how to do a crypto deal. I'd let, the, the influencers of the world be good at what they're good at. So shut up. Let us do our job. We appreciate it. We got you. We'd love to come on your podcast and help you out. And we would love to have you come on our podcast and help our clients out with your unique skill set. So let's all do this together and stay compliant together. 
All right. See you next time. Thanks, everyone.